Okay. The things I want you to see how to do, if you don't already know, can be misused. All right. I mean, you could use these to to rip off podcasts and videos that other writers have made. But what I use them for, why I'm recommending them to you now is for the kind of research that we do. I mean, novelist, nonfiction, whatever, you know how it feels when you find just the right facts for a journalism piece or, or just the right background information, a moment for a novel and a character. And you know how it feels when you lose that and have to try searching for it again this time if that fact or that moment or that quote maybe is in a podcast or a video well we're having it hello i'm william gallagher and this is 58 keys which as ever as always is for writers writers like you and me who use and who write on macs and iphones and ipads uh, do subscribe or support 58 keys on patreon because there is so much to talk about. There's always so much to talk about. This time, you and I will take a podcast, uh, we'll take a video, and we will make a complete transcription of it so that, as writers, we can later on search that text for that fact, that quote we want. Um, I also want to show you a kind of bonus general purpose, related general purpose tip at the end, so please wait for that. I'm not trying to build up tension, it's just fits at the end. All of this, by the way, is on the Mac, I should say that. I do not know how to do any of this on the iPhone or the iPad. And if you do know, if you know, you must let me know. You must tell me. And I'll come back to this topic with whatever it is. You basically, I'll steal from you. Okay. But for now, I'll tell you this straight away. The transcription part is going to be done by the app called Whisper Transcription. There was a whole 58 Keys episode about this excellent app a couple of months ago. Now, and if it was excellent then, well, it's actually it's even better now. It's just getting great. So, tell you what, let's do the video a bit first because that's simplest to show. Although, actually, it involves an app that uh, it's another app like Whisper that doesn't come on the Mac. So, something you need to get. This app is called Downy. There are others that are similar, but Downy has worked for me where others haven't. In Downy, you find a YouTube video that you want, you click that share button. You copy the link, you launch Downy, and then while you're in Downy, you click on the really easy to miss plus button at the bottom side to add from pasteboard. And then once you click that, whatever you just copied is chucked into Downy and it goes off to have a look. It goes up to size up the job. Can it delete this video? Can't always. Depending on what the video is, you can also get a lot of this, like a barrage of options about, well, in this case, subtitles, but also in this case, we're just going to want to end up with the audio. So we're going to transcribe later. So sub yeah, just pick anything, really. And then a way off, Downy goes downloading the video from YouTube. Like I say, doesn't always work. And it does always take a little while. But then you have the video on your Mac. Now, it, this is a thing. YouTube is not meant to be downloaded and I don't think YouTube likes it creators of YouTube videos may not want you to download their work but videos on YouTube also disappear and your downloaded copy won't not unless you decide to delete it you've got a safety copy of your research so actually this could already be a useful research tool but for what I want us to do Find that downloaded Downy video in your downloads folder and drag it over to Whisper Transcription. Uh, one thing I would like that isn't happening at the moment, you can't just drag the, the document onto the Whisper icon in the dock. You have to drag it to the open Whisper window. But then off it pops, transcribing away actually quite remarkably quickly and very accurately. While it's doing it, let me tell you that Downy for Mac costs $19.99 or £15.99. It's also available though in Setup, which is where I've got it. And Setup, if you don't happen to know, is the bundle system that gets you 230 or something like that full Mac apps for a monthly subscription fee that starts at about $10. Anyway, Whisper Transcription itself is free, but you can choose to pay an upgrade fee to have it be even better really. It's an AI app that uses a particularly large, large language modules to do its doings, technical detail here. And if you pay a lifetime fee of $30, it uses an even larger, large language modules. And, and so is better. 
Also, I just want to support it. There is, by the way, also an option of a $10 annual subscription, but I just can't see the value in that. Skip it, go straight to the lifetime one of $30. And now, with all that said, let me leave Whisper doing its doings, and we'll come back to the transcriptions when we've also got the podcast. If YouTube doesn't want you to download videos, Apple really, really does not want you to download and keep podcasts. It wants you to listen to them in the player, but you can download them. And when they are downloaded, you can do things with those downloads if you can find them on your Mac. Here's how to find them. Open Apple Podcasts, right? Find a podcast show, pick an episode. This one is an absolute favourite of mine. This is a series called 99% Invisible. It's just an extremely well-made show about the design of everything. I cannot recommend 99% Invisible highly enough. And honestly, I keep trying. I hope they don't mind me using them as an example. Let's keep this between us. This episode, as it happens, has a word in it that was new to me and a word that I adore. Really, as well as everything else we're doing, I just want you to see the word. Okay, Click the download button next to the episode and wait a little while. Uh, you can check, actually, then when it's done, there's a download section. You could look to see if it's there if you like, but actually it always will be, won't it? So we're done with the Apple Podcasts app. Quit that. Now go to the Finder. You must be in the Finder for this next bit. You can't be in another app. In the Finder, under the Go menu, choose Go to Folder, right there at the bottom. Or actually, you can press, uh, let me see, it would be Command-Shift-G. I have to remember it when I'm not actually doing it. And now you get this dialog box, and it's already filled in. It's already showing what I last used. And actually, what I last used is what you need. I was testing it out a minute ago. That address, or actually, strictly speaking, it's a path to where the file is on your Mac. That is actually too long to be fully visible in the box. It goes on for another five years or something. And it's definitely too long to remember. So uh, get a pen, please, and write down for me the tilde symbol, slash users, sl sl why aren't you writing? Tell you what, check the episode description for the full thing. Small problem, you can't just go to the episode description, copy and paste that, because there is a difference doing it on your Mac compared to doing it on mine or anybody else's. The path needs your username uh, up near the top. So for me, for example, it is tilde slash users slash William Gallagher, one word, slash and so on. Get the link from my description, uh, pop your username as one word in that gap where it tells you actually, and then paste it into this box and hit return immediately. A finder window opens up. A finder window that is from so deep down in your Mac, you could carbon date every step along the way. Um, in my example version, I should say, I should have thought about this more. I've come to this window and we need to go one step further. I have to open up that folder. You can see they're called the cache folder. I don't really understand why I didn't just put that in the go link to just end up in cache instead of here, but I didn't. You can add cache and do it better than me. But anyway, whichever way we do it, we go into the cache folder and there is no sign of 99% invisible, except there is. The name will always have been passed into some unrecognisable mess of characters, and I don't know why, possibly to stop you searching for it. But I only wanted one episode, so I only downloaded one episode. So the one file there that's an audio one, ends in .mp3, has got to be it. Drag that to Whisper Transcription, and away off you go again. So Whisper might take a few minutes, but at the end, you have a complete, and actually, in my experience, very good transcription which you can search. I do need to tell you that I was doing this a few days ago for something else and the search in Whisper, why well, just didn't work? You know, I, I don't know why and actually it's working today. Isn't that the reverse when you want to show somebody something? It's working there. So uh, I start typing the word I want to show you and we have to scroll through to find it highlighted but there it is. Backronym an acronym made by picking a word first and then coming up with what it could possibly stand for. I cannot just love that word so much. Anyway. Um, incidentally, when Whisper Search wasn't working, in case this happens to you as well, all I did was I selected the whole transcription, 
copied it, pasted it into another app. I used Drafts 5, the app I write in a lot, Drafts 5 for the Mac, and then I search for it in there. And whichever way you do it like that, it's faster to search text than it ever is to listen to a whole pass, a whole podcast episode through from the start to the end again. So there's that. There's There it is. There's the fact, in this case, a word. The whole transcription you searched for, you find it when you need it. And I suppose, actually, as well as doing that quick search... You've also got the video. You've also got the podcast. I don't tend to do this. Actually, I don't tend to do any of this very often. It's only when it's going to be really useful and I'm searching for something. And afterwards, well, I sometimes throw away the transcription. Usually keep that sometimes right away. But I definitely throw away the video and the podcast. But it's up to you, isn't it? Um, I Just because I must, I put a link to the 99% Invisible podcast in the show description. Okay? Even if you never do anything of what we've talked about today... Do try that series. It is tremendous. And yeah, there is just this bonus extra tip that tip even that I kind of tried teasing. You thought it's not big. Rather than getting whole podcasts, right, or whole videos, you can use your Mac to record just the segment you want, if you know where that segment is, using another app, an app called Audio Hijack. Uh, actually, this is also what you can do if the podcast you want is not on Apple Podcasts for some reason. Audio Hijack. It's a Mac app that will record any sound on your Mac. It will it'll record the bleep of a new email if you want it to, or it will record Zoom calls. It will record podcasts, you know, when you make them. And actually, podcast producers often enough use Audio Hijack in the making of what they're producing. Uh, and actually, it will record the audio of videos that you play back on your Mac as well. Audio Hijack, it's like this essential tool for me. Uh, in my case, a few times a year, right, I'll be on BBC Local Radio, and I don't really know why, but I keep recordings of all of them for... It must be ego, really. What else could it be? But anyway, I do that, and I record them by playing back the show in a browser and recording that section in Audio Hijack. Audio Hijack costs $77, and it's one of those apps, one of those special few apps that you will buy it to do a single thing, a particular job you need, but then you will find yourself turning to it repeatedly. But for now, that's it for this research edition of 58 Keys. Thank you very much for watching. Now take care of yourself, write more, listen to 99% Invisible, and I'll see you soon.